Evans Coaching YouTube channel, and we have uh, approaching 3,000 subscribers uh, here on our YouTube channel, which is by far and away uh, one of the most popular coaching or performance uh, video channels on YouTube. Uh, over a million people have, or videos have been watched over the last few years, and uh, each video, each and every video that we do, uh, is focused on swimming, cycling, and running technique. And we also do movement analysis in terms of flexibility, mobility, and stability. And that's what we do here at our facility here near Lake Tahoe, is uh, athletes will fly in or drive in for one or two days, and we'll do thorough assessments of your movement first, and then we'll provide exercises for core stabilization or weaknesses in the muscles or inflexibility touching exercises for that and mobility exercises. Uh, the thing that we believe strongly in, and we've done this almost I've done this almost 25 years, is that coaching technique alone is is not as as beneficial as also combining or coupling movement analysis and motion analysis in terms of mobility, flexibility, and stability. Making those corrections off out of the water or off the bike or off when you're not running will aid your uh, ability to run, swim, and bike faster, more efficiently, and to be sure without as many injuries. Um, today's video, however, is uh, about swimming, and one of the most popular uh, videos we have is on the high elbow position, and I've done several videos on this, and today I'm going to add some more information on that as well. And um, I think it's very important first that uh, coaches, and there, there are a lot of videos on the internet, and they talk about uh, like the early vertical forearm, uh, the high elbow catch, and uh, they use many, many other terms are used in both of uh, coaching circles, scientific, biomechanic circles, uh, and they all have a lot of merit to them. But the main thing is, is uh, knowing how to execute the phases before and being able to have the movement capacity, or flexibility, mobility, and stability in order to achieve those positions. And so I'll just talk very briefly about those, those phases that precede the high elbow catch or early vertical forearm, which I am more or less thinking of an, another uh, uh, way of, of describing that early vertical forearm because I think it is a little bit troubling for a lot of athletes or a lot of, of adult, learner swim, adult learning swimmers or uh, triathletes per, in particular uh, because you can't just say I need to execute an early, early, early vertical forearm without first understanding the mechanics and the propulsive uh, properties of swimming and why, uh, you know, balance and streamlining and those movements before the early vertical forearm are so important. So let me quickly just go through those. Uh, each one of these sections could take an hour or more to just talk about, but the first thing is, is you need to have a good balance point. And it's not just as some will tell you, pushing the chest down. Yes, you want a low chest because that's your buoyancy point. But what we like to see you do is to move your center mass is more in and around the hips. And what we like to see a swimmer do is to move that point further up more towards the chest. And one of the ways to do that beyond just 
driving the forward chest down, which is a, a little bit difficult for some swimmers because we want, we want a level horizontal body. We want to minimize resistance. That's the first and foremost thing in swimming beyond the mechanics. I mean, you, this is where we start with swimmers. We start with learning to breathe, learning to have a good balance point. And I think that the best way to have a good balance point is to have a long stroke that's a continuous stroke. It, there's no gliding either, absolutely no gliding. I've been talking about that for over 10 years. But we want a continuum of your stroke. But the, the key thing that we believe, or I believe, that helps with balance is having more of a, what, what we would refer to as, as more of a catch-up stroke where the stroke is happening more in the front part of your, of your catch or the stroke. And that will bring your hips up, uh, almost guaranteed. We do a lot of scolding, and when you scull out front, your hips come back. So what we want to do is to get you more out front in your stroke as, as a foundation, as a, as a fundamental part of your swimming. So if you get your balance, then the next thing is, of course, is your entry into the water. The entry in the water must be smooth, must not have a lot of turbulence, if any. And that's where, where we set up, or we begin to set up the catch, or this early vertical forearm that a lot of coaches are calling it. And I prefer to call it just a high elbow, because that's the effective position. Um, high elbow catch. But the, the entry line is so important. And for you, uh, learn to swim, intermediate swimmers, intermediate advanced swimmers, y'all should be working on just isolating that entry, doing maybe 16 25s with 20 or 30 seconds rest. So each one is just perfect entry line, entry, just smooth and relaxed, letting the, the hips stay up on the water without over kicking. The next thing, though, is the stretch, and we, it's a continuum of the entry where the, where the palm, the forearm, and the underside of your upper arm are stretching forward. But you're going to notice here, my elbow is above the hand. My elbow is flexed. It never extends or lengthens here to where my elbow gets underneath. We want to stretch and you want to stay on top of that. And you do that by maintaining good scapular control, upper shoulder, upper back control. And you can see that flexion here. So now what I have is I have a wing shape. And I've talked about this in other videos. I call this the wing line. Or it could even be likened to a boomerang. When, you're, when you hold the water properly, when you flex that position, you aren't pulling the forearm, but you're actually just holding this position. And of course, we're at the stretch now, so we're still entering. But the important thing is, is not to stretch so far that the elbow gets underneath the hand or the wrist. You want to hold it in this position. So I'm here. And what we like to tell swimmers is to imagine there is a barrel here this large barrel, and you're placing that flexed forearm and hand over until the deepest point that you can get over this barrel, over this imaginary barrel here. If you do that, you've, you are then at your catch point. That is your catch. And now you can wing. You have this boomerang or this, this arced wing that I've called wing line. And the whole idea at that point is to continue that motion, to not pull. We, we, I would like to throw the word pull out. It's actually holding, anchoring, scolding perhaps, some diagonal scolding in order to get leverage on the water. So the, the, what we're really focusing on is entry, stretch, catch, and the catch is over that barrel, over that, that imaginary object here, you know, right in this area. 
and you get as deep as you can, and you're going to see how high that elbow is. That elbow is very nice and high here, and it doesn't need to be vertical. It can't be vertical for everyone. Uh, it's going to take 10 years of swimming to develop that. But we can, as, as, uh, or many of you can, as beginner, intermediate, intermediate, advanced, and even the more skilled uh, triathlon swimmers, getting that deeper catch over the barrel sets the leverage, and in particularly for open water swimming. I mean, there's a huge amount of turbulence in open water swimming. If people are kicking, there's a lot of bubbles. So there isn't a lot to hold on to up there. So it's, uh, it's a very, very useful technique to think of streamlining, minimizing turbulence on the entry, stretching, main, and this is where it sets up the, elbow, the high vertical catch, high vertical position, vertical elbow, is by keeping that elbow up above as you reach over and around that barrel. You can see that high elbow position there. From that position, it's hold. It's, it's scapular stabilization, holding that position, holding that kind of boomeranged position, feeling the water on the underside of the palm, the forearm, and the underside of the arm. You're going to feel that pressure. And there's no better way to do that than doing maybe 25-yard swims with 10 seconds rest if you're, if you're just beginning or an intermediate swimmer. If you're more of an advanced swimmer, you could go 50 yards, but each and every one of those movements are executed just as I said. You're working entry, stretch, and then over the barrel to that hold, that flexed position in the forearm, or in the elbow rather, in order to get that nice high elbow and catch. You're really trying to catch the water, and that's the idea. It's, it's not a, a, a mystery what we're trying to do there. The more that we're catching, the more that we can hold the water and our body will move over that fixed point in the water. When you, when you drop the elbow or pull with a straight arm, pull straight arm back, you don't get the kind of leverage and lift on the water that uh, a more skilled swimmer would obtain. So uh, there's your tips uh, for today. High elbow. A little bit of entry information there. Uh, also the stretch, flexed arm, it all connects together, minimizing the turbulence. And uh, I'm hoping that this will uh, help you uh, with your technique. But don't forget, you need to have your flexibility, mobility, and stability uh, worked on or looked at, assessed. And of course, we do that here or I can be brought to your area for individual training and or uh, clubs and teams will often bring me in for you know, four or five days up to a week, sometimes just for a weekend, and we do assessments that way as well. Anyway, best of luck to you, and thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care. I'm Mark Evans.